Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Continuing Care 101 with Affirmation and Health Pro Heritage. I'm Florence Brooks, Director of Resident Life and Wellness. I'm so delighted this afternoon to have McKenna Weeks, who is the Rehab Director for Health Pro Heritage, and Caitlin DeGracia, who is the Clinical Liaison for Affirmation. The two have come together to share about what each of their organizations does and how they work together for your well-being. They'll be sharing with you and there'll be time for questions at the end. But I know you're eager to hear what they have to say. I'm going to turn it over to these ladies. Thank y'all for being here. Okay, so can everybody hear me? No. I have a, a light-toned voice, so. Um, again, my name is McKenna Weeks, and thank you all for coming. I am um, the rehab director here with Health Pro Heritage at Cedarfield, and um, an occupational therapist by background. Um, so first, I just wanted to give a little bit of an overview of what we're going to be talking about. So I'm going to kind of explain what Health Pro Heritage does here at Cedarfield, and then Caitlin is going to kind of describe what Affirmation Home Health does, um, and like Florence said, how we work together. And um, at the very end, we'll probably do a panel for questions and discussion. So if you have any questions, just try to hold them till the end. And if we need to go back to a certain slide or anything, we can certainly do that. Um, we're also going to upload this presentation onto the app, hopefully tomorrow. Um, so you should have access there. And if you want a printed copy, we could certainly do that as well. We just didn't want to print out a whole bunch and waste any paper if we didn't have to. Okay, so I'll get right into it. Here is our lovely therapy team um, here in Outpatient with Health for Heritage. I'm sure you guys see quite a few familiar faces. So um, starting from the left, we have our lovely rehab tech and administrative assistant, Maisha. Um, and then um, there's myself, McKenna, and KK. We are the OT team. And then from a physical therapy standpoint, we have um, Vlad, who I'm sure you all recognize. I know he's a fan favorite. And we have Maddie. And then we have two PT assistants, <coughs> excuse me, um, Jen and Tracy. And then we have Sandra. She is our speech therapist. So I'm sure each of you are familiar a little bit, you know, with physical, occupational, and speech therapy, but I am going to go into each of them just a little bit so that we're all on the same page. Um, so starting with physical therapy, they really look at your balance, your mobility, um, so things like walking, your transfers, if you have a lot of recent falls, then physical therapy may see you to work on balance and safety to kind of prevent those falls. And um, they can address a lot of different things that may make mobility difficult for you. Um, some of these things include pain, stiffness, um, fatigue, swelling, uh, loss of balance, and unsteadiness. From an occupational therapy standpoint, um, that is my favorite, of course, because I am an OT, um, we look at more of a holistic approach. So we look at your day-to-day -day life, and um, in a traditional you know, aspect, occupational therapy may be um, bathing, dressing, grooming, going to and from the bathroom. Um, but what I really love about OT is that it kind of addresses everything in your day-to-day -day life. So, you know, what is important to you and what do you enjoy doing? And, um, you know, if you sustain an injury or, or something happens that you're unable to fully participate in those tasks, then an OT may help you. So um, we address things as well. You may see some similarities with PT, but pain, weakness, um, recreational activities, sensory motor skills, adaptive equipment training, family, family and caregiver education, as well as fine motor control, and a ton of other things as well. This is just, you know, a brief list. 
And finally, we have speech therapy. So um, just from the name, you know, you might think, oh, she helps with speech. And while speech therapy does help with that, they also can address things like language, chewing, swallowing, memory, voice, and communication. Um, so Sandra, in our case, would help you um, if you are having more difficulty being understood or if you are actually having difficulty understanding, um, if you are having issue, issues with memory, um, difficulties with problem solving. Um, those are some of the cognition aspects that Sandra may help with. And then from an eating standpoint, um, are you getting food caught in your throat while eating? Are you having difficulty chewing? Um, are you having any hearing deficits or a recent weight loss that may be unexplained? <clears throat> are you being easily distracted? These are all things that speech therapy addresses and can help with. So can you benefit from therapy? So here is um, just a short list of some questions that you may ask yourself. So um, is it becoming more difficult to get up and out of a chair? Are you having more difficulty walking to and from activities when you are out in the community? If so, then physical therapy may be something that can help you. Are you having difficulty getting dressed and ready in the morning? Are you having more difficulty opening containers, preparing meals? cutting foods, that sort of thing. If so, then occupational therapy may be able to assist you with that. And then, are you having difficulty remembering to take medications? And what medications are you supposed to be taking? Are you having difficulty swallowing at meals or when taking medications? Are people having difficulty understanding me when I am talking? If so, then speech therapy may be something to help you. Is everybody understanding me okay? I saw somebody giggle up here at the front. I might need speech therapy myself. All right. So if you have any of these problems that I've identified, you know, how do you come see us? What do you need to do? So all we would need is a referral. Um, and you start with this by getting a physician's order from your doctor. And that can be from a doctor here in-house, such as Dr. Cook or Dr. Shear, or also from an outside physician. They will work with you to identify a need and then um, bring the referral to us. And it can either be via fax or you can stop right at the front and drop it off to Myesha. An example of what the order would need to say is PT to evaluate and treat for increased difficulty with walking or it might be OT to evaluate and treat to address increased difficulties with self-feeding. Once we receive the order, we will then request to make copies of your insurance cards and verify your benefits so that we can determine if you may have any out-of-pocket costs or um, if everything will be covered. And then once we discuss that with you and obtain consent from you to treat, then we will set up a date for evaluation. And lastly here, um, we have a nice visual that kind of helps to understand how Health Pro Heritage and Affirmation um, are here to help you in different circumstances. So, for example, if you were to sustain an injury, such as falling and breaking a hip, and it resulted in you going to the hospital, and then you came back here to healthcare at Cedarfield, then we would see you for therapy um, us being Health Pro Heritage. And then while you're in healthcare, we will typically see you anywhere from three to five times a week. And then once you are safe enough to return back home, that's when we would turn it over to Affirmation Home Health. And they will come into your environment, make sure everything is safely set up for you, and then, um, you know, could see you anywhere from a few weeks to about a month. And then once you are no longer considered homebound, and I know Caitlin will get into that a little bit more, um, then you will discharge from affirmation and you can come back to see us in outpatient therapy with Health Pro Heritage. Can you explain that again? 
short thing. So <clears throat> if you start at the top of our um, little chart here, you know, it says hospital injured or sick. So let's say, you know, something happens and you end up at the hospital for a short stay. And then you return here to Cedarfield in healthcare. Then we will see you, Health Pro Heritage will see you for your therapy while you're up in healthcare. And then once you regain some of your independence and your strength um, or endurance or you know pain management, whatever have you that you're working on, um, when you've made progress and we, you know, as a team feel that you're safe to go back home, then we will discharge you with orders for home health therapy with affirmation. They will then come into your home environment to make sure everything is set up and safe and um, you know they might go over for OT, for example, they may go over your bathing routine. And while we worked on that in healthcare with OT, it may be a whole different circumstance in your home setup. So we try to simulate it as best we can, but um, it's important to have those therapists come into your home to see you as well. And then once you discharge from them, if you need further therapy, then you can come back to the clinic for outpatient. You're welcome. And I'm going to bring up Caitlin's um, slideshow here with affirmation, and we will take more questions at the very end. for us.
apologize, but it seems that the internet has gone out on us, so I'm going to work on that. Um, but in the meantime, Caitlin is going to use her notes to come up and present. So again, this is Caitlin DeGracia. She is a clinical liaison with Affirmation Home Health. see all the fancy font we got going on, unfortunately. All right, can everyone hear me? All righty. So I'm going to read kind of through our affirmation slide that we have going on. But like they said, we'll get it printed out or onto the app tomorrow. That way you guys can see it. Um, I am Caitlin. I am the clinical liaison. Oh, looks like she got it. Yeah. <laughs> You guys may have seen me around essentially what a clinical liaison does. I speak to all of the doctors, social workers, McKenna, and we coordinate your care. If they think that you might need home health, they'll kind of be like, hey, Caitlin, we, we got someone for you. And then from there, I'll just make sure everything is in line, kind of making sure the transition from either health pro or the hospital goes as smoothly as possible. Um, I want to first thank everyone to coming out and kind of hearing me ramble on about Affirmation. It's an awesome service to be able to provide and we are sister companies with Cedarfield. So that's why you see a lot of the Affirmation people here. Um, I want you all to bear with me. I'm not the greatest speaker. So please just have a little grace with me. Um, we do have, I'm going to start with the slide that McKenna ended on and it goes over how we collaborate in a sense. Um, so she went over how if you were to go to healthcare, and I know a lot of us, when we get out of the hospital, we do not want to go to healthcare. We want to go home. We want to see our pets. We want to see our family. We want to take care of our plants, so on and so forth. So if you were to come home from the hospital, then from there, someone in your care team would probably communicate with me hey, so-and-so came home from the hospital and we think that they would benefit from home health. From there, we would come in, whether it be physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, or just nursing, and help out with that. And then, like McKenna said, once you are not considered homebound, then you would go to Health Pro, and that's considered their outpatient part. And here is a little breakdown of some of the people that you may see around. These are our key players. Uh, we have a new executive director, Perry. Um, he is a nurse by background. You may have seen Lexi more so than Perry. Uh, she's been with us for some time and she is our clinical manager. So she kind of makes sure that all on the clinical side of things are going correctly. And she oversees the nursing side. Uh, Sharice Baker, she takes care of more of the private duty part of things, and then me. Okay, so what is homebound? Um, homebound is considered by Medicare that you're unable to leave your home, um, whether it be because it's too far to walk to outpatient whether it be that your medical condition could get worse if you leave your home, whether it be that we think it, your doctor thinks that it's a fall risk for you to go out and about into the community. So per Medicare guidelines, it is, you need to be considered homebound. All right, and right here, this is just a short of some of the services. I'm about to dive in deep. You guys can kind of look over. It's a lot of the same services that McKenna, McKenna's team offers. We have skilled nursing, therapy, 
social work, home health aides, and then on the private duty part, we have nursing, CNAs, and PCAs, which is um, a great service, but that service is more out of pocket. All right, diving into skilled nursing. So these are more specifics on our skilled nursing side. We, I'm sure that you may have seen at least one or two of these faces around here. Um, they help with medication management, like she said, if you're not aware of like what medications you should be taking or it's just too much to take care of, nursing can come in and help with that. Um, they do vitals assessments, IV management, disease management, and education. And our physical therapy team, you guys may have seen around. This is um, some of the things that they go over. Now this is more of a short of what they like to uh, pay attention to. However, there's a whole lot more to it. But to keep it short and sweet, they work on balance, strength, endurance, your walking, safe transfers, and focusing on minimizing that fall risk. Mm -hmm. Now, if you had physical therapy with uh, affirmation, where is the physical therapy done? Have your own stuff? For affirmation, it'll be done within your home. Oh. Yeah, okay. this is all the home health se sector of everything. So all this is done within your home. I yeah. Mm -hmm. And then this is my specialty. I am an occupational therapist by background, just like McKenna. Um, I'm going to try to keep it as brief as possible, but it is the same kind of when you are in healthcare. It kind of focuses on becoming independent, again, with your bathing, your dressing, your toileting, making sure um, you're having those safe transfers, cooking, cleaning, laundry, the list goes on and on. Um, with that being said, this is what we do within your home, within your environment, because it is, like she said, you can simulate as much as possible within healthcare. However, within your home, it's much different. There's there's rugs, there's corners to tables. There's so many other obstacles other than what's in healthcare. And I promise we do have a speech therapist. We just could not get a picture of her. We could not track her down. However, she does do a lot of the same things as the healthcare side. However, this is in your home. So she focuses on swallowing disorders, memory and cognition, disorientation, safety, communication, and things like that. And then we also have home health aides. So the home health aides are a little bit different than our private duty part of our affirmation. Home health aides work alongside the therapy team and the nursing team. They will help you with everything that you would need them to do. They even help with cleaning. So that's always a bonus. So while you're in therapy or you have nursing, you can take full benefit of the home health aides. And this is the personal care private duty part. I can uh, print this out and give you more of a breakdown of this. This is a customizable package. It is out of pocket, unfortunately. Um, and they are a great help, but we all know like out-of-pocket expenses can add up. And then, so you're all probably wondering, what is home health going to cost me? If you have Medicare, it's completely covered. So if you come from home from the hospital and you want to have home health, you do not have to worry about the cost if you are with Medicare. And that's about it. To bring the microphone to anyone that has a question. No questions? Oh, here we go. <laughs> right. Thank you. Are there a certain number of days that after a hospitalization, specifically that Medicare covers, and how that differs from uh, being in healthcare and being in your own home? So I would say for if you were to come home from the hospital, 
the amount of days from hospital to home health, it's usually like one or two days. And then Medicare will cover whatever your care team deems necessary. So say you came home from having a hip replacement and you wanna go to home health. Say you're up and running in two weeks. So two weeks, but say we need a little bit longer. Your care team will collaborate with yourself and the doctors and we'll send over that information to insurance and say, we need to go a little bit further. We need to extend out a week or two. Um, that way you're getting the best care you need and Medicare does cover it as long as one, you're making progression in your notes. So we can't stay in if you're doing the same amount every single time we see you. We have to show some kind of progression. Um, and Medicare typically covers all of it. Does that answer? How does it work if you have a need but you have not been hospitalized? Then your team, your uh, social work team, will typically get in contact with me. So anytime there's a change of status, your social work team, they're, they're on it. We talk every day and they'll let me know. And then from there, we'll get the paperwork in order. And then from there, you'll hear from either our nursing staff or our physical therapy staff to get you scheduled. Also, if you are going to the doctor for something that has happened, then um, as I had discussed earlier, they will give you a referral or an order and it'll, um, usually they can help you determine if you need PT and OT or just one or the other or speech therapy. And once they write that order, then um, you can bring it right by the clinic to, um, sorry, I say the clinic, but our outpatient therapy office, or you can have them fax it to us. And then we can um, communicate with you on getting an evaluation set up for outpatient therapy. And then going off of the Medicare question, um, it's a little bit different in healthcare, and it does vary for each resident depending on secondary insurance and who you have and if you have that. Um, but generally, you know, it's, again, it's not an umbrella term, but Medicare will cover 20 days, 100%, and then from day 20 to 100, there may be a copay. But if you have a secondary insurance, a lot of times they will pick up that copay. I had a question, please. Um, primarily to you, Caitlin, I thought it might be helpful if, say, um, a resident calls me as one of the social workers and says, Kathy, I'm having an outpatient um, or maybe overnight procedure, um, bowel replacement or whatever, but I want to go back home and I don't want to go to health care. Can you just kind of explain so they know what the process is like? you would call them and possibly let's see yeah and I think that might be helpful yeah absolutely the process with that would be once you leave the hospital sometimes you can get the order there sometimes we have to hunt down your your uh, physician here depending on hopefully everything goes in order um, once you get home I would be notified by one of the social workers hey so-and-so is home then I would get the ball rolling. I would make sure that you have all your paperwork in order. Um, then from there we would, sometimes I do give the residents a call of like, let me make sure this is what you want. Um, nursing can come out and do an assessment to see how long you, they need to stay out for. Um, I know we were talking about doing check-ins. We do have a service for that, but that is under the private duty part of affirmation but essentially after you get home I would give it about one or two days once you're home and you'll get a call from either Lexi our clinical manager her nurse staff or our physical therapist to set up an appointment to be evaluated does that answer that yes. okay another question Anyone? Thinking, thinking, thinking. Well, I wrote some down, just because <laughs> I have questions. Um, what does PCA stand for? 
A uh, private care aid. A private care aid, and that's private pay. So what's the difference in a PCA and a health aid? The health aid follows along therapy and nursing, and that is at no cost. So as long as you're under therapy or nursing, and we, we deem that you would benefit from a home health aid, then they would be in. And can you give a ballpark for what personal care costs? I can give a breakdown. I can print it out. It is, I don't want to give you 100%, but it's between like 25 and 30 because there are overnight prices. 25 and 30 an hour. Mm -hmm. And then yes. the overnight price, does that go down an hour? It goes up. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Makes yeah, and I can um, always give a breakdown of that because there are a lot more, I don't want to say contingencies, but there's a lot more to it. So when, basically, as I understand it, when someone is in health care, they're under the care of Health Home Heritage. Yes. But when you go home and need to be home, and when it's a risk to leave home, you're under the care of Affirmation. Yes. And then when you've exhausted all the options then um, for care, you can either continue with private care in your home, not private care, what's the word? Private care is the Medicare word. Personal care. Yes. <laughs> um, personal care in your home or talk about moving to another level of care. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Other questions? Or do you want to just keep going? How about the social workers? Do you have questions, Lynette and Kathy, on situations? I think just mentioning also when you move to a different level of care, like assisted living. Thank you. Caitlin, you guys have helped us out a lot when someone moves from independent living to assisted living with the transition and oh, yeah. just familiarizing themselves. You know, that's a service that's also out there yep, for them. Absolutely. If you say you were in independent living and we decided, we as meaning you and your care team decided that it is more appropriate to go into assisted living. From there, I know it's a big change. You know, you're in a different part of the building. You're meeting new people and it's, it's very disorienting. So from there, we can have occupational therapy come in and help you learn your new environment. We can also make sure that the home is set up in a way that there's not a fall risk. And then we can also send out speech therapy who can help orient you to your new community and area of that building if you're not already familiar with it. Great, other questions? So just in short, if you're thinking, I have no idea what to do, Go see one of our social workers, Kathy and Lynette, are actually in the back of the room right now, and Ann, our clinic nurse. Our superstars back there. <laughs> and just so you know, Ann and Kathy and Lynette and McKenna and Caitlin talk all the time. Yes. <laughs> so this is a relationship. Yes, sir. Here we go. I'm coming. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Do you have uh, extended care program as to, for example, you or Genworth, will that cover the, care, the cost of personal care? Unfortunately, not right now, no. We would have to get a contract with certain insurances for the private care. Thank you. Great, I'm so grateful to you all. Do y'all have any questions for these folks? Can't think of any, no? Okay. Um, so grateful to you all for being here. We will have the video and the, and the PowerPoints up on the app by tomorrow. If not sooner, if you want to scroll back through that. So grateful for you coming this afternoon. And Caitlin and, and McKenna, <laughs> we appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you all for coming.